Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. It is your friendly neighborhood city planner Raznek and today we're going to try out City Skylines 2 and give, give you know, take a crack at building our own little town here in San Carlos. San Carlos, this is our little town here. So I hope you enjoy this and uh, yeah, let's get to it. Let's show you. All right, first things first, we're gonna go ahead and get started with our new game. Uh, I've been looking at a few of the different maps. I've played a little bit on each one of them. Uh, I think I'm gonna go sweeping planes, sweeping planes. So we got plenty of natural resources. We have all of our connections, a highway connection, rail connection, ships, planes, electric, 31% of buildable area. So it's a decent sized map. It's not the, not the biggest one, but it's pretty good. Uh, we have a climate 24 to 74 degrees Fahrenheit. It is themed North American and the latitude is the Southern Hemisphere. North American theme, Southern Hemisphere. Hopefully, hopefully in the future we get a, a you know, a South American theme. That would actually be, that would be quite nice and build cities, you know, with the, with the architecture elements. You know, of other parts of the world. Right now, it's just North American and European. Let's just select our map. Uh, as for town names, you know, Beverly Hills, no things. Chorley, Lake Valley, uh, San Carlos. Let's do San Carlos. It sounds, I like that. I like the name of San Carlos. It's, uh, you know, Southern Hemisphere Latitude. So we're going to do San Carlos. Uh, and uh, some of you may find that funny. Uh, Carlos, yeah, yeah. Anybody, anybody who's watched my channel may actually find may find the humor in that. Uh, natural disasters, we're gonna turn on. Oh, it just just for the sake of the video. All right, let's hit start game. Let's go. All right, here we are at the start of our little map. You see, this is sweeping planes. A nice uh, kind of, you know, again sweeping plane. It's a nice little planed area, kind of flat, relatively flat area right here um, between kind of this coastline with these raised hills and then this big mountain range and then we have kind of this nice flat area with water drainage coming off little rivers coming off the mountains uh, we got a highway that's you know coming through the town we have a railway and like I said eventually we'll have some ship you know some some connections for boats and other items coming into the town but first things first i think what i'm going to do is we're, we're going we're gonna to build us a nice little grid to get started we're going to we're going to drop in some roads i'm going to i'm going to get this grid kind of built out how i'm thinking i would like it and uh, we're going to go from there yeah let's do that fire up the tunes and we'll time lapse the building of roads see how this turns out i'm i'm whole i'm new to this making city skyline stuff so i, I mean it may be horrible we'll find out That is our starting road network. Eventually, I'm 
continue on uh, this way. That's why it kind of looks a little broken right now. But this is my concept um, for this build is this is going to be kind of the heart, the main, you know, here's the interstate coming off into the highway. This will be a big, long highway. This will be like a main road. And I wanted to leave plenty of room here to to expand these roads. That way, eventually, we have all kinds of space to make these roads really big through here. We can make some nice interchanges in so that we can expand this highway network eventually. This is kind of, that's where this eventually will go, is a big, long highway up here into the mountains. Maybe it even wise off, goes up into the mountains there. And that way we have a nice feeder area, or, or, or main road, arterial road coming into the highway. Uh, we're gonna build a little diamond right here. I will do that later once we unlock more road resources. I also went ahead and dropped in just a, a transformer station right here under electric transformer station. We're just gonna buy our power for now. Eventually I will put in a geothermal power plant. I, I, I prefer the geothermals. I think they're they're quite cost effective. I put our water intake right here. We'll be pumping water out of the river and we'll be dumping our poo poo water right there. And if you ever need to know how the water flows, if you go into water, if you select your pump and then you hit play, it'll show you the water flow. So of course, if you, as you can imagine, you don't want poo poo water upstream from your water intake because you're going to poison your people. So you want your poo poo water to flow downstream away from your water inlet. And this should be far enough apart that it doesn't cause any trouble because the water is flowing fast, quite fast. And you can actually put in a ground pumping station if you wanted to. Uh, with You can actually put in these ground pumping stations. Um, you don't, just to kind of start, the ground pumping stations are twice as much, uh, but they, and they do less. So it's 20,000 a month in upkeep, but only 75,000, what is it? You know, 75,000 water output. And whereas the, the pumping station is 10,000 a month for a hundred thousand. So this is just more cost effective in the long run. Uh, especially on maps where you have plenty of surface water, plenty of flowing water. Now, if you ever, if we start getting water pollution from industry and stuff, this may not work out. Uh, being down here, we actually may have to put our water intake kind of up in the mountains, which you want that mountain fresh water, and then we can make Coors Light. <laughs> so, all right, we got our road network put in. Uh, the next thing I want to do is talk about pedestrian traffic. So I do 13 by 13 squares. So you can see these are 13 by 13, which leaves one empty spot in the middle. And what I like to do with that is put in a walkway. Those are, I put in pedestrian walkways and I like to chop these blocks up. These again are called super blocks. This concept has been around for a while. You can do this. Uh, you can you can put these straight. Uh, you can curve them. You can do it however you really want to. Just the only thing is, um, just be, you know, if you start cutting diagonally, you're going to maybe interrupt your zones a little bit. But the concept is, is you're connecting all these sidewalks and you're making a nice pedestrian area. You can even cross the street and make a crosswalk right here. And you can have all kinds of, you know, pedestrian traffic going through your 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 neighborhoods. You, we're not going to have them cross the highways. Like we don't want a crosswalk going across our highway. You could put like a a, a walk bridge, you know, like a, a high bridge here. If you wanted to across, and then that way the pedestrians could cross. And eventually we'll probably put those in. But right now what I'm going to do is we're gonna paint in or draw in or build in all of these walkways and then uh, we'll see what it looks like.
And now that we have our basics out of the way, it's time to start dropping in some zones. So we're going to kind of think about what we want to do here. Uh, like I said, industry, the wind blows this way. So we're going across the map. So any industry is going to put our air pollution this way. Uh, so we're going to kind of want to minimize no residential area kind of in this this part of it so maybe industry and then maybe farmland up in here uh that way people aren't complaining our residents aren't complaining about the stinky pollution from the industries my plan we're just going to fill in just create a, a few little neighborhoods here just to kind of get things going we're going to go ahead and unpause let those start filling in and maybe we're going to start maybe a little commercial zone kind of through here that just uh, like, you know, this little square here. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that's a good idea because we want uh, we want our people to have some place to work. So we'll just drop a couple of these in for now. You don't need tons and tons of them to get things going. Uh, and then let's go ahead and we'll drop in uh, some industry just just one industry really we don't really need tons to get going and and that's that's how we're going to start that's how we're going to start evatsu avatsu uh metals plus steel they're making machinery there that that sounds like a good job what do we got over here what's building in uh no tenant no tenant furniture outlet and vehicles filling so we sell furniture and cars that's that's pretty good let's go ahead and fast forward things see if we can um, get this to pop we might have to add in a, a few more little just added some more residential we're trying to get um, We'll drop in one more industry, people a job. You don't want to overbuild. You don't want to get too crazy at the beginning. You don't want to get nuts and have stuff everywhere. You just want to kind of smatter in things to get this first level to unlock. And now you can see we have population of two people. Our population is climbing at two people per hour. That'll speed up as we add more housing. And then these businesses are open. We have a textile place, chemical place. Uh, this, we'll drop in another commercial zone. And you're just going to start filling in these neighborhoods as you need them. Really want this to unlock. So I'm going to get this first level to unlock. And all we're doing is just dropping in neighborhoods and start filling out our city. And as soon as it unlocks, we'll, uh, aha, ta-da, we have progression. So we've reached milestone number one, which gives us another $600,000, uh, a progression point and some more panels. So let's just pause time here. Increase our loan limit, gives us some more map tiles. We can now mess with our city budget a little bit, look at statistics and actually have some medium density housing. Uh, the most important thing, the thing I recommend the most, the first thing you want to research is this advanced road services. You're going to unlock that advanced road services, and that gives you another tab here in your road section. And that allows you to put in a road maintenance depot, which is very important eventually because the road maintenance people, uh, they repair your roads, they clear the snow, and they also clean up traffic accidents much quicker. So you do want to have that road maintenance depot somewhere on your map so you have those service trucks going around. Also, the nice thing about this now is we can actually go in here and remove things that we don't want on our roads. So like prime examples, I accidentally put a crosswalk right here. That crosswalk has a traffic light. That's going to slow down traffic. But we're going to go into the road maintenance we're going to click on traffic light and we're going to right click to remove it. But I think we have to remove the crosswalk. Yeah, we got rid of that crosswalk and now we don't have people, you know, crossing the highway, getting hit on the four lane road. We'll leave our crossings at the main intersection so you can do that. 
which is quite nice. We can add or remove these these red lights. We can go in and add. We can remove that red light or add a red light. We can also designate turning lanes. So if we don't want our people to turn right or left, we can actually go in here and put no left turn. And that way people can't turn left if we don't want them to. So that road services is very, very nice. But the most important thing for that, or the thing I like to do at the beginning, is these roads aren't highways. And because of that, people can park on the road. And uh, we really don't have enough people to show you that. Uh, so I'm, I think what I'm going to do is fast forward a little bit and I'll show you people. Oh, right here. Prime example. This little car is parked on the road right here. They're parked. And they will fill up these side streets with parking. So a way that you can fix that with your main roads is once you get level two, you can go in and you can put four lane divided highway and you can replace these roads with a four lane divided road. Like so. Um, and we just kind of replace all these roads with a four lane divided like that. Um, and then you can go back into your road services and there's this grass and trees, or you can also do a wide sidewalk. So you have a few options. You can widen this center median right here, or you can widen the sides. And by doing so, it prevents parking on the street. I like to do the grass. So we'll put grass in the middle and we kind of widen that median and then the people can't park on these main roads, which forces the parking into the secondary roads. So you kind of keep your roads clean that way. Um, eventually we'll put in parking lots and things of that nature. But right now we're just trying to prevent people from parking on what we call our main roads. Uh, at least that's what I like to think of them as. And you can take another step further if you want to. You can go into this tree part. And now that we have the center median, you can plant trees. It's only $100 to plant these trees. And these are going to grow in and just make your city look really nice through here. Eventually, this will be a highway and this will go away. But in the meantime, it just kind of breaks up the monotony of concrete and zones. Uh, that can kind of happen in this game, especially if you, if you, the way my brain works, I want everything to be, you know, squared and right angled. Uh, I have a, I have a problem with, uh, with things looking chaotic, uh, but this kind of breaks things up as you can see, kind of makes this little green divided highway to keep people from parking. Yeah. All right. Let's, uh, let's kind of move forward a little bit, expand our town just a little bit by just adding a few more zones. And when I get back, uh, we'll see where we're at and we'll start adding in some healthcare and some waste management and things like that. We just elapsed a little bit of time, added some more residential areas. But with, with you know, a lot of things, you're, you're trying to keep your people happy. So if we click on our little happiness meter right here, unreliable healthcare coverage, minus four. Which means as it sits right now, if there's a health emergency, our people have to leave because we don't have any locally sourced health care. But with being level one now, a tiny village, we actually can build a medical clinic. And this has an area of effect. Um, but at the beginning, you just kind of want to put it in. Eventually, you can move it if you want to move it. You can kind of put it wherever you want. I think what we're going to do is put it off of these little side streets. Again, I want to keep the center area clear. Sorry if I give you a new seizure. I want to keep this clear uh, for road expansions, interchanges, and so forth. But these little side roads right here are, are going to be perfect. Uh, this would be our housing, but we can kind of put city services and businesses and so forth along that line. So let's just grab our medical clinic. I'm just going to plop it in right there for now and then eventually we can actually upgrade this and add uh you know ambulance and extension wing or ambulance depot and that allows us to upgrade it and gives us a little bit of space right here to eventually make this highway a little bigger 
uh, because if, at some point we want to may, maybe make this avenue bigger. So we're going to keep these two squares open so that someday we can come back later on and maybe, you know, add in a five lane asymmetric road or a five lane highway or even a larger road as we get bigger roads, six lane road, a nice big avenue coming through here to keep this traffic flowing across our town that way. But as it sits right now, we've got our medical center. The next thing that people are going to want is unfortunately the medical center or the clinic can't fix everybody. And so people die. It's just kind of the nature of things. People die. And uh, in this game, people die. And that's, that's just kind of it. So what we're going to do is I'm actually, I think I'm going to just pop in the cemetery Kind of put it up here off the side of the highway for now. And we don't have to snap it right to the road. In fact, we can kind of, you know, kind of tuck it in back here if we want to. Just for now. Let's kind of tuck it back here into the woods. Um, kind of slap it in right there. And you see how this terrain is, is rough on each side. If you want to pick fix that after you place it, go into your terrain tool. Grab your leveler and hit level around your building and then grab your smoothing tool and voila. And now that little raised area is gone. Just a, a quick little fix you can do for editing the terrain. And now it, it doesn't look cut out, I guess is, is what I'm saying. Uh, and then what we can do is we can, we can make like a nice little, a little road. It doesn't even have to be big going up to here. Uh, but again, we want to keep stuff off our main interstate. So what we can do is we'll go in here and we can actually move this back a couple notches like so. And then we can grab our little road tool here. We can bring a road up this way. And then, you know, if we wanted to, we could even do something like so. Make like a nice little loop-de-loop -loop here don't have to do the loop-de-loop -loop, but it just makes kind of a nice little a nice little lane and then we could actually go into our road services tool and um, make this a one lane road we can actually oh that's a big one lane can't do I don't think I can do a one lane alley yet no I would like one lane alleys but unfortunately we can't so we'll just have this little road like so Boop. and there is our cemetery there is our medical clinic. Last thing we need to do is our landfill. And with that, I think the best thing for us to do here is we're going to put our landfill up this way. Just kind of out of town, maybe. Or actually, we can even put it, we can even put it right here. We can even put it right here. So let's go ahead and use up one of these map tiles that we have. And we're going to purchase that little plot of land right there. And we're going to continue this four lane divided road up this way. And, you know, we can even, we can even put like a slight little curve to it if we want to. Like so. The nice little curve and finish this out just real quick. And make this kind of evened up. This would be our industrial park. And then we can just bring our landfill just right off of this, this highway. Again, if we want to bring it off the highway, but let's kind of do some, some forward thinking and uh, we'll actually just kind of slap our landfill right here for now. We don't need tons and tons of room to start with. Uh, we'll just kind of do square it up right here, maybe. Indecisions. Always full of indecisions. Do something like so, just for now. And again, we have that weird terrain look, but which is easily fixable. Go back into our train tool, we get our leveler. We're trying to bring our land out 
right here that's part of it. Then we grab our, our smoothing tool. Kind of smooth this around. It's not the best. Um, that looks kind of weird. I actually don't like that. Let, let, let me let me fix this how I like it, and then we'll look. Yeah, I'm much happier with it over here. Just pop it in over here. That's what I did. I just kind of brought it away from the road. Uh, we can expand our industry straight up this way, but then we, you know, nice thing is we now we have a little spot, right? We can, and then we'll grab again this this little alley kind of road. Seems to always work really well for these uh, kind of these industrial buildings. Um, a little bit of a curve there. That does look kind of weird. But that, but that's all right. We'll just go up Chester Lane. Yeah, we'll just do like that little hook. That's all good. Now. Uh, we can expand the size of this. So what you want to do is you can go into your garbage, click on landfill tool, and then we can actually make this area a little bit bigger. This already holds um, 255 tons, which isn't, it's not huge, but for our little town, that's all we need right now. And eventually we can expand this as big as we want to expand it. Or we can even add a secondary landfill. There's all kinds of options that'll eventually come back later uh next thing i think we're gonna do is um let's put this diamond in um uh actually let's do some medium density housing yeah we can see our demand down here as as calling for medium density housing like right here yeah that's a good spot let's go into our medium density housing and a little trick i learned um is Instead of painting like this, right? What's gonna happen is the game's gonna wanna fill from the road. So the best thing to do is to just do like that. So you don't, you only want your your zoned area touching one road at a time. And then when we unpause, now you can see all of our houses are going to fill in this way. They're going to fill in from the one road direction that we want. And in fact, at the very beginning, it's a good idea not to overzone because you want to control the build. You you only want, if you only want certain size buildings, the best thing to do is to go in, pick your density and just put your one row of housing in, just like so. And then that forces the game to build these all similar, all in the same row, all facing the same direction of the street. You can do the exact same thing with your commercial industries if you don't want those to be broken up. You can, again, here, this is a two road connection. If we fill this whole square, we're gonna have random access, but if we want to force entry, you can just drop in that road and then that forces the entry off of this road and then Unfortunately, when we do this side, you can't guarantee force entry. You might just have to delete and keep going back, so forth, so on. Now you can see we have more demand for medium density housing. We'll come back over here. And now that this road is filled, we can drop that in safely. And now we have all of our row houses are going to face the same direction. Oop. We have all of our basic needs, so let's go ahead and work on this diamond intersection. So what I want to do is I'm going to pause the game because we got to get quite creative. I'm going to grab a one lane road right here, one lane road right here. And uh, you can get as fancy as you want. I actually am horrible with curves. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back one, two, three, four, five, six. We're going to go back six spots, leave six squares between, and we're going to kind of tie in this road. Again, over here, we want six squares. So one, two, three, five, six, one, two, three, six. And we're just going to drop a one lane road right there. And then we can take this and or, uh, you, you want to build in the direction you want it to flow. So we're going to Take that one lane road like this. 
and one lane road like that. All right, and then we're gonna do the same over here. Now, you ask, you're like, Raz, that's a freaking mess. Yep, it's a mess. And how do we fix it? With our road services tool. We're gonna go in and we're going to delete these red lights. We don't need red lights here, here, here. The only intersection we want with a red light is this intersection right here. Also, what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of these left turns. We don't want anyone making left turns at these intersections. In fact, we don't want anyone, uh, I'm sorry, we don't want anyone making right turns. Yes. We don't want anyone making right turns, not left turns, right turns. So, because we want them to use this one-way street. We want them to use this one-way street. So, no right turns. No right turns. Now, the next thing we want is we don't want people turning left off of the, our exit ramp. So we're going to get rid of these left turns like so. Now we should have almost a perfect little uh, uh, intersection here. I think it looks clear. That road is actually off a little and that's going to drive me crazy. So. Let me fix that. I gotta, I gotta fix it. I can't, I can't handle it. I gotta, it's gotta be perfect. Um, there we go. Like that. And then a road service tool. Going to, again, take this left turn away. No right turns. And I think that should be everything that we have that should fix all that the next thing we want to do is we want to get rid of these crosswalks like so um in fact we're going to get rid of all these crosswalks i don't want any crosswalks in here none at all we'll we'll make it pedestrian friendly later with like a, a little sky bridge kind of over the highway, but we don't want any crosswalks through there. Crosswalks are our enemies. That's our, our like a main thoroughfare. We don't want to mess with it. And then if we hit go, we're going to watch this for a second. We don't have a whole lot of traffic coming through, but you see this taxi turned right. Okay, perfect. Let's see which way this car goes. Cars turning right. I just want to make sure everybody's turning the way they're supposed to go. Right turn. Oh, this is what we, we want to get rid of this. See this little left turn? We don't want that there. We don't want that. So we're going to get rid of that left turn. That left turn. Really what we're doing is we're pro we, we're programming the AI. We want this car to go straight through. Perfect. That's what we wanted and it is working. Let's watch this little, this delivery truck come through. He's gonna turn right. Now these people can turn left at the middle of the intersection. But all other traffic's going to... You guys are turning left. Yep, I like it. I like it. It's like a diverting diamond right there in the center of our town doesn't that look so nice that looks that looks so so very nice yeah well i think the next thing we'll do like i said is let's just put a we'll put a pedestrian bridge in just so i can show you how to do that and that might be it for this episode one other thing i want to talk about real quick i was just looking at businesses you want when, when you're building your your businesses or when you're building your commercial industrial section you're going to have this demand meter down here this demand meter is kind of like a suggestion. It's not an absolute. Um, for your housing, it's a little more predictable, but for the industry, the best thing for your jobs, the best thing to actually do is to go into this workplace, workplace availability tab, look at your total workplaces. We have 177 
total workplaces. We only have 55 employees. Our city, we're actually, people are coming from outside of town to work here right now. We have 133 employees, but we only have a population of 60. And so you want this number, uh, these open position number to be as low as possible. So even though it says I have a little bit of commercial demand, a little bit of industrial demand, I'm not going to build any until this open position number gets as close to zero. Now, sometimes your open positions are certain educated levels. You can see we have uneducated, poorly educated, educated, and well-educated. These are harder to get until you get schools. Uh, so usually at the beginning, you're going to have a lot of uneducated and poorly educated people taking your jobs. So some of those open positions aren't going to be able to be filled without outside people. But just kind of watch this number. You don't want thousands of empty jobs and only a few hundred people because then your businesses are operating at poor efficiency. The efficiency of the business is based on the employees. So this one has three of three, we're 100% efficient. This one's seven to 12, it's only 75% efficient. And you can see the problem for efficiency is not enough employees. So you want to force your labor market to be as even as you possibly can. All right, that's enough for that. Let's jump into our pedestrian walkway. All right, because we want our people to be able to walk everywhere in our town, right? We want everyone to be able to walk everywhere. We want them to be able to access across our highways. And again, at the beginning, you don't have to do this. You can put walkways in, but it just kind of helps to do a little bit of pre-planning so that you, you're not running into problems later on. Again, this is going to be our highway. We don't want people walking across our highway because one, it slows down traffic, and two, they might get hit and killed, and then they take up space in our graveyard. All right, so what you wanna do is we wanna put a covered bridge. It doesn't matter which one you do. There's a cable stayed, covered pedestrian, or a pedestrian arch bridge. It really doesn't matter. They're all the same. I don't think it matters. The easiest way I found to do this, for me, is I go ahead and pick which one I want. I go up 10 meters. You can go higher if you want. But remember, anything is 10 meters is going to take a slope. And then you want to, again, give yourself room to expand, right? So if we if we come back maybe three squares from there and we put our first one and then we put three squares that way. Now we have a nice covered bridge over our highway that we could eventually hopefully add lanes to later. We line that up. Now we just take our footpath tool and we're going to go back down to zero we're going to cross this road right here we're just going to bring it up to the footpath tool uh, another thing you can do if you don't want a huge slope if you want it to be the shortest slope you can you can start with the bridge so we're going to start at 10 we're going to connect after we connect we're going to drop it back down to zero we're going to go out right there that's as that's the slope that the game's making us put in. And then we're going to connect our pathway like so. And now we have a pedestrian bridge. And voila, we have a nice pedestrian bridge uh, all, over all four of our highways. So now our city is completely pedestrian friendly. Completely pedestrian friendly. Um, yeah, almost, almost. I'm not, eh, I guess we could, we could actually, you know, we could get real creative here, here and we could put in, again, this will, this might all go away at some point and you could just do a straight line through here right now. And then, or, you know, like this, like that, put like a little walkway back here and, uh, Just a nice straight angle and now everybody can get to work too because all these pedestrian paths eventually connect to this one and they can walk from here 
all the way to here if they want to or all the way from here over to here yeah it's very simple i went ahead and changed these up a little bit i just have them extending all the way out to the intersection just because of the ground the terrain changes they're 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 going to be a, they look a little off at some angles but for the most part they work great let's unpause i we probably won't have any pedestrians yet um, but we shall see. Oh, no, we got some medium density needs, so let's just fill those in. Now, perfect. That's what I wanted to happen. So you see how these are full lengths? The reason why this one's not full is if you watch, our demand is dropping quickly. It's because the demand doesn't meet the size of the zone. So if you don't like that, which I don't, just dezone it. Just dezone it, then hit delete it, and you're good. And then what you want to do is you want to wait for this demand to be up higher because the higher the demand, the more likely you are to fill the space that you that just see that filled in a full three by three because our commercial demand or a six by three because our commercial demand was high. The higher your demand, the more likely you are to fill the, the space that you zone in. So if you want everything to look the same, Again, you could just dezone it, delete it, and retry it, and kind of force the game to give you what you want. That's it for this one. I think we're done great. I don't think we have any little pedestrians yet. Um, we really don't have a whole lot of people, but we're set up and ready. We are ready to expand. Our, our city is built ready for explosion. And so a little bit of pre-planning goes a long way to, you know, kind of eliminate headaches later on. Just give yourself plenty of space, you know, give yourself room to expand, to change, to make, you know, to do things, kind of come up with a plan for everything because your little characters are going to walk from here all the way over to here. And if they're if they if there's a road crossing, they're going to cross the road. Uh, so you want to make sure that you take away those crosswalks, force the AI to do what you want, you manipulate it to your will, <laughs> and you can become the evil Mr. Burns of whatever town you want. Thank you for joining me today. I do appreciate it. If you could, a little thumbs up. You know, just. You know, you click the button if you liked it, you know, or subscribe if you're new to the channel. Again, I'm new to City Skylines too. This is the first City Skylines video I've, I've ever done. I did a stream last week, um, but this is my first kind of pre-recorded City Skylines stuff, and I, I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm having a lot of fun playing this game. I'm spending lots of hours doing it, so if I'm going to play it, I might as well record it, throw some words to it, and hopefully bring some of you along on this journey in the comments please let me know what you think if i've said anything wrong if you have any tips or suggestions please let me know because i am far from an expert i'm learning as i go uh on this wonderful wonderful game and until next time stay safe thanks for watching see you later Bye bye